the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is the Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday for everybody. This is one of the seven major feasts of our Lord Jesus Christ that are related to our salvation. The question I want to answer today is why do we celebrate that feast and why we consider it a big feast? The church is more full than usual. Some people are coming with ties and, and we are all holding palm branches. Why this is a great feast? We know that Jesus entered triumphantly to Jerusalem as king. But when we hear this story from the Gospels and we read it from the four Gospels, usually we read from one Gospel. But today we read the same event from the four Gospels, Mark, uh, Matthew, Mark, John, Luke and John. We know that the, the reading, the center of the reading is the readings is the Gospels. But what are the other readings are telling us about that feast? We see on the, the Pauline epistle from the Hebrews read on us today, he's talking about Christ came, came as high priest of the good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation not with the blood of goats and calves but with his own blood he entered the most high place what this has to do with Jesus entering to Jerusalem if we look to the Catholic epistle therefore since Christ suffered for us in the flesh arm yourselves also with the same mind for he who has suffered in the flesh has seized from sin. What this has to do is being with Jesus being entered to Jerusalem as king. There is a missing part. The missing part is that he entered, yes, as a king, but he also entered as the Lamb of God. He entered as the sacrifice. And this has a background from the Old Testament. When God made the, the tenth plague to the Egyptians and he ordered his people to come out from the bondage of, of the Egyptians to worship him in the freedom of the, the sons of God or the people of God as people of God. He asked them to do the lamb of the Passover. And he told them that on, on the 12th chapter of the book of Exodus. He told them, now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying, this month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first months of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel saying, and, and please be attentive here. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And, and after a few verses, Now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it as twilight, at twilight. So the lamb... The, the ritual of the, the giving the lamb of the Passover is that it should be taken to Jerusalem on the 10th day. And then it will be offered on the 14th day of the month, the first month of the, the Jewish year. It is the month of Nisan. Nisan is not the, the car, the, the brand of the car, but it is the, the first month of the year. So on the 14th, they should kill the lamb. But it should enter to Jerusalem on the 10th of the month. 
Did you get something from that? So Jesus entered as the Lamb of God, yes, as a king, but also as the Lamb of God. As the, the Jews used to get their offerings, their lamb, which will be offered to God, they take them and enter to Jerusalem on the 10th day. For these lambs to be offered on the 14th day, on the day of Passover. So Jesus entered, that's why we are celebrating that feast. Yes, because Jesus entered as a king, fulfilling the, the, the prophecies. But also he entered as a sacrifice, as the Lamb of God. We, 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 knew, we, we should understand that link between why we are considering that day is a big day and a big feast related to our salvation and Jesus entering to, to Jerusalem. Yes, he is a king, but he is also the Lamb of God. We always see Jesus the Savior. We always see his cross and his sacrifice, which liberated us from the bondage of the enemy, from the bondage of sin, from the bondage of death, to the, the freedom of the, the sons and daughters of God. That's why we did a procession, as I said, on, on, uh, on the raising of incense, that we, are, we did a procession, the same procession we are doing on the two feasts of the cross, because we glorify God, because he, he accepted the cross for our salvation. And we express our joy because of that salvation, and that's why we did the procession. And we did the procession before the icons of the saints because we don't separate between the saints and the Bible. Between the saints and Jesus, who these saints have followed with all their hearts. And this will lead us to the second point I want to talk about. So the first point, why we are celebrating that day, because Jesus entered as a king and as a lamb of God. The second point, this great joy, I think we are all holding the palm trees. The kids are very happy with the, 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 the palm branches and doing nice crosses. One of the kids made me that cross. So, and we are happy with that. You know what? That's a heavenly scene. That's exactly what St. John has seen on heaven. He has seen the, the people, a great multitude of people, gathered with palm trees, palm branches on their hand, on the Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 7. After these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And before the Lamb. The one sitting on the throne, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, he is the Lamb of God, who is dead, but he's alive, and will be alive forever. So, great multitude from every nation and every tongue and, and, and every tribe, and they are gathered before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, with palm branches, same scene. So we are living a heavenly scene, but it shouldn't be one day and it will be gone. These palm branches will wither, and we're going to throw them away or they will be, will be lost. But our faithfulness to God shouldn't. Our faithfulness to God and our love to Him shouldn't wither with time. Because we need to be the ones or among that multitude who are holding the palm branches, not in the church on April 5th, 2015, but who are holding the palm branches in heaven. So he continues and says, with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And you see how 
St. John on the Revelation is always relating between Jesus as the king sitting on the throne and as the lamb because we cannot separate between them. He is our crucified king. He's, he is our slain king. He is our slaughtered king. And he accepted that for our salvation. All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in with white robes and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation of the earth, the great tri tribulation of the earth, and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger any more, nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. People will not hunger or thirst. Because they hunger and thirst for righteousness. Do you remember what Jesus said on the Beatitude, on the Sermon of the Mount? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they will be filled. We should be, I'm very concerned these days and allow me please that I'm gonna focus and base my sermons during the Holy Week, this Holy Week, on this verse. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they will be filled. We should be coming to church to be seeking for righteousness. We should be coming to church willing to be filled because we hunger and thirst for righteousness. The multitudes we have seen on heaven, they are the people who were hunger and thirst for, for righteousness. What is our focus? What is our priorities? What are our prior priorities? Is it God is above everything? He doesn't accept less than the whole of our heart. You should love your God from all your heart, all your mind, all your power, not just half of it. These are the people who will be in, in front or before the throne of God and before the Lamb. The, the reading from the Acts today, it was St. Paul preaching among the Jews. And it said that some of them, and some were persuaded by the things which were spoken, and some disbelieved. So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word. The Holy Spirit so spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our father, saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive, for the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has, has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. So will we hear or not? Will we be hunger and thirst for righteousness or not? We need to ask ourselves on that blessed time. And we should ask for repentance. It's a great time for repentance and confession. Many people come during Holy Week and, and say we need to com confess. And we are having hope because our King has defeated death and sin. He, have, he has given us hope. If you are defeated from sin, if you are defeated by the word, we will, we will say... No, we're gonna, 
walk in victory be behind our king who defeated death and sin and give us hope to be his people, to be before the throne, holding palm branches not on earth but in heaven among the 144,000 who are before the throne and the Lamb and glory be to God forever. Amen.